All right, everyone, this is very exciting because T-Mobile just came out with a brand new gateway that has some really cool features on it. And this is for their 5G home internet. And so they have three other main gateways out there. This is one of them, the Sagemcom. But this one has at least one really key feature to it that people have been looking for, and that is the ability to switch from internal to external antennas actually default in there you do not have to take it apart if you look at this one here I have this guy um, still partially disassembled because I hook up external antennas to it this one you don't have to do that so I want to open this up go through it I will set it up and uh, see if they've changed any of their setup stuff as well as their firmware inside it to see if it has any more settings than these other ones do because these are very limited with what you can actually do inside them so let's just open it up see what's in there and see how it goes Alright, so here it is. Now, I find a little bit of irony in it. I guess it's not very big irony, but it's funny to me because this is the only gateway that you don't have to disassemble to get to these ports. But it's also the only gateway that when it comes in the box, you actually have to assemble it. Now, it's just clicking this in uh, right here to hold it up. But I still find that a little bit funny that um, this is one that you do have to actually assemble. Alright, so if we look at it down here, it does have um, a couple LAN ports in yellow. And now these ones I think are just a 1 gig um, speed LAN, which is fine most of the time. But if we look at what they have announced with doing some 5G carrier aggregation, we can have multiple 5G, I think up to 100 megahertz of actual bandwidth. You should be able to get over that eventually with uh, these gateways. And so this only supports 1 gig. You have a SIM card slot right here that you can pop off this little silicone cover for. Then you have the power which is a USB-C, and then right beside it is another USB-C, but that's not for powering this unit. Um, I believe it's just for typically sending power out. I don't know exactly what that's intended for. I know that T-Mobile and other ISPs kind of modify these gateways. Some of them maybe could support a uh, network-attached storage uh, device, you know, an actual like hard drive or something to that. T-Mobile typically has not been supporting anything of that, no data in and out of there, just uh, power for fans and other stuff. So... And then the other key thing you see here is for SMA connectors. So these mini SMA connectors are for external antennas. Now, uh, it has built-in internal antennas, so you do not have to use those ports at all if you don't want to. You can just set this up. If it works, great. If it doesn't, though, you can hook up. Now, they are actually offering a external antenna, but it's not yet available as of you know, right now, September of uh, 2023. But it's supposed to be available sometime soon. The problem is when I looked at it, it looks very wimpy and it looks like it's indoor only. So to me, it's really kind of a worthless antenna. And also, if you listen or find some of the verbiage out there on T-Mobile's site, uh, they'll tell you that only their antenna works with this. I'm going to go out on a pretty thick, strong limb and say that is not the case. Any of these uh, waveform or other antennas should work. I, of course, will be testing that and verifying. But this is a 4x4 MIMO setup. It also has a 4x4 uh, internal to it. Now, if you are interested in a waveform antenna or any of their products, actually, I get a 5% discount code for all my viewers. Check out the video description below to get that coupon code or that link to do that. And then as far as the actual modem chipset that's inside this, this is a MediaTek unit. I believe it's the T750 which is actually the same as the other Arcadian gateway, which is the KVD-21 that T-Mobile has that you can still get. Um, in fact, it looks very similar to the Sagemcom one, so it's a black tower like this. Um, but this one actually does support more 5G bands than any of the other devices. If you read into the specs, you know some of them maybe support N77 or N25 and not some of the other ones. They all support N41, N71. Uh, but some of these other either higher frequency or like the Sprint uh, bands, some of them don't support that. This one supports the most 5G, so that's kind of the benefit to it. And uh, let's really hook it up and uh, see what it does from a setup standpoint. All right, so I just plugged it in here, and let's see if it powers on. Yep, it powers up by itself. Don't have to press any buttons here. In the box, it does come with a quick start guide. It doesn't tell you a whole lot. It really tells you place your gateway. It shows you upstairs and in a window if you can. And that's what this uh, base kind of actually does. It actually has a sticky pad underneath it that's covered up from uh, from the factory when they ship it. But the idea here is that you can put this in a windowsill 
and I assume this is kind of a reusable sticky pad. You could clean it off with uh, water and let it dry. That's my assumption. And then it has a rotation ability for it with a little set screw. So if you can rotate it to you know get it closest to the tower angle that is pointing, and then you can lock it in. That's the idea of this uh, guy right here. I'm down in my basement where I get very poor signal, um, but this is where the studio is at. So this is where I'm going to do this filming. Then we'll bring it upstairs and do some testing with it. So it says put it upstairs, and then it says plug it in, which we just did. And it says the SIM card is already installed in the unit. And then it gives you a QR code to download the T-Mobile Home Internet app, which is not the same thing as the T-Mobile app that you might have already, like on your T-Mobile phone. So this is a different app specifically for the home internet to connect to. So that's um, what I'll do now is open up that T-Mobile Home Internet app. And then I'll connect to this. Now let's see what it says. Uh, great, you joined the... T-Mobile network um, and it tells you uh, to download the app here and then it's giving me the phone number for this um, gateway itself. Alright and so down here what it's showing me is actually showing me three bars which is way more than I was actually expecting for the basement typically on these other units I get maybe one bar um, so we'll see what that uh, that kind of means but it's telling me to download the app here um, as well as no devices connected to it that's telling my line number, no messages, and the antenna. So here, this is the message that um, allows you to pick a internal or external. We'll get into more than that in, in a second here. And you can change your languages. So let's just go and download um, the app and get hooked up. To All right, so I'm just going into my Wi-Fi settings here, and I'm finding this T-Mobile, um, and this one is the 4D54. Just confirming sometimes I have a couple gateways plugged in at the same time. And I need to type in the password that's in here for the Wi-Fi password. Unfortunately, this one is a jumble of characters again. It's not plain English like the Sagemcom one is. All right, so now we're connected. I'm going to hop into this T-Mobile Home Internet app. And we will do the uh, setup device. And it's going to be the 5G gateway. Yep, it's already got that. We'll, well, I guess I'll play the video just to show you what it what it does show you here. Alright, so it has a video and it basically just tells you th four things. One is place it as high up in the house as possible, second floor upstairs. Put it also as high up on like a shelf or a windowsill, that kind of stuff um, for the best signal. And then keep it away from things like microwaves or other um, Wi-Fi devices or cellular devices that are sending out um, signal. And then lastly, you also want to make sure you try lots of different places uh, you might get poor signal in one or two places, but you might find a sweet spot. Um, so then you can also use this placement assistance here where I can share my location with this device. And then it's going to help me orient or go to the right side of the house for the tower that I should connect to. So here it says, great news, it's found my information and it's showing me where I need to point the gateway to get the best signal. All right, and so now that I'm connected, this is one trick I really recommend for everyone. If you are just now getting this gateway and you already have an existing Wi-Fi network, let's say you have a, you know, um, a charter uh, cable modem with Wi-Fi built in, all your devices are hooked up to that, I would strongly suggest you just change the Wi-Fi name on this new gateway to whatever your existing one is. Uh, even if it's like uh, if it's listed out there as Spectrum or AT and T, and then their numbers. If you do that, then all your devices will automatically connect to this new gateway. And you don't change your settings. So your your printer, your uh, smart TV that uses Wi-Fi, your smart watering meter, any of that kind of stuff doesn't have to actually change um, its Wi-Fi information. So, all right, so there we go. We are all connected. Now, it did give me a little trouble with the uh, QR code. It wouldn't take it. Um, and now it's saying it's not connected. So it's definitely being a little bit glitchy there uh, for whatever reason. Let's see if it there it goes. So it, did, it is a little finicky. Their app has been finicky in the past on me. And what I want to do is go in here and um, look at the advanced cellular metrics to see what I'm connected to. So this is telling me here um, some different values. The key ones here are what is my band is B12, which is a bad band that I know, at least for here it is. My signal to noise is negative, which is terrible. You want it up um, like around 20 if you can get it. 20 or higher is better. If you're above single digits, you're good. You're okay at least. Uh, but being uh, 0 through 5 or 0 through 10 is um, you know, not good. 
and then um, my RSSI is my signal strength there and of course I have no 5G down here so that's not surprising um, I'm a little surprised that it's showing me uh, three bars of signal but I guess that's because my signal strength is actually at that minus 93 um, and so it's actually not terrible strength but the noise is not good so um, we can obviously test the speed down here it's going to be bad uh, but might as well test it all right so i'm just going to use speedtest.net app i'm going to let it do its default thing to find its server and to run with it um, again this is in my basement i know it's going to be bad i think in the past i would get very poor um, download speed and even worse upload speed uh, you can see here, yeah, it's going to be a couple megabits per second at best without a booster turned on. This is all just um, in its default place. I have a lot of videos on boosters um, that I can get. You know, I think I was getting like 50 or 60 megabits per second down here in the basement with a booster set up for T-Mobile. But without it, it's very poor. So this shows you how important placement of the gateway is. So being on a lower floor or if you happen to be tucked in behind... Um, you know a hill or a heavy tree or foliage uh, in a certain part of the house you're going to get way different speeds than if you put this where you want it to go and that's where an external antenna can really help so let's go put this upstairs and do a speed test and see how it does all right so i did a couple different locations just to kind of get an idea of how the speed compares now i went from my basement up to the first floor so the main level ground level of the house and i was able to get on you know I say able, um, whatever it picks, right? You don't have a choice of what bands it connects to other than um, moving it and hoping that its logic changes and picks a different band if you don't like the one that you're on, at least for these stock gateways. So it hopped on to B2, which is a better band for me for the 4G, and then the 5G hopped on N41, which is T-Mobile's you know, 5G ultra capacity, so that is um, definitely one of their better 5G bands out there and you can see my signal to noise got much much better went from these negative values down here in the basement to a, a positive 12 so that's an okay um score now the the signal um screen was actually showing me weak which is kind of funny because down here is showing me good and it just hopped to weak so down here is kind of uh something that shows us good but that's where i tell people you really probably shouldn't even look at that bars because that's not really what matters is what bands you're on in the signal to noise ratio and that's where an external antenna really helps the most is that signal to noise ratio so we'll get into that in just a minute here but uh so for this one um it got 81.7 for download but only a measly one megabit per second for upload and you can see i can have uh over five percent packet loss which is not good and my pings are also uh, not good uh, in there you know around one second for a loaded ping um, is certainly not ideal for things like video conferencing or gaming so um, I kept moving it around down on that first floor in the same little area that I used to have my office and um, I got it to switch to band B66 and for the um, the LTE and then for the 5G it moved over uh, or sorry stayed on N41 but it moved up to um, almost 16 for a signal to noise so I thought hey this looks like it's going to be better and um, I did a speed test and it actually got worse for my for my download speed and one of the things that really stands out here for at least that specific test on B66 my packet loss was 88 uh, percent so that's horrendous but there's a little glimmer of hope because you can see that my download loaded ping uh, did improve significantly from one second down to about 0.2 seconds. So uh, five times improvement just with moving the gateway in the same room in a, in a 10 foot location uh, orientation and whatnot. So this one does appear to have some sensitivity uh, to that um, orientation and location. So then I went straight up to my third floor law. So I skipped the second floor of the house and I have this little third floor nook that um, it is kind of HVAC controlled so it's better than, than being in the attic um, and it is uh, level with the attic space so it's really ideal situation for these gateways because it's almost as good um, as putting an antenna up there uh, in some cases because you have the gateway directly up there at that height uh, but it does have to go through a wall and the roof and everything else so 
Um, the, um, the signal got much better, and I got a 4 out of 5 bars shown on the, the gateway. Sometimes I, if I keep trying to move it, I might get a glimmer of full 5 bars shown on there. Um, but so for the 5G, it also showed in 41, and you can see the signal to noise uh, improved a little bit closer to um, the, the 20 mark that I would say is really where 20 and up is, is good and where you, you would prefer to be. So the first speed test there, uh, that showed uh, 188 for download and 26 for upload. So that upload, um, just from my knowledge, especially of messing with these third-party gateways, one of the reasons why the upload was so poor on the first floor was because I was using N41. And N41, the protocol that they use, uh, now I forget which one it is. I think it's uh, FDD versus TDD, um, which is frequency versus time. Um, segmentation for how they actually send the signal um, from the tower to your device in 41 prioritizes download so I was getting that 80 megabits per second download but pathetic 1 megabit per second upload which means I wouldn't have been happy with I couldn't probably do video conferencing very well even your internet and stuff would be sluggish because you're not able to send the request out fast enough um, to the internet with that slow upload speed and I know up here, even though I'm on the same, it shows me N41, I know what it's doing is carrier aggregation there, and that's what's really helping me get that upload speed and also the download for that matter. But if you look here, there's still a lot to complain about. We have um, poor loaded ping for sure. My, my unloaded ping got much better. It's down you know, 20 uh, milliseconds, which is good, but the loaded ping has always been a problem for me specifically with T-Mobile. Um, here and uh, more so with the upload loaded ping but I did notice that that was on a different test server than it picked in these other locations so I did force it to go to the same test server and my speeds went down somewhat my pings uh, roughly the same you also notice I have zero packet loss uh, in these um, but then I kept moving it around and trying to try some other things I was able to get my N41 signal to noise up uh, over 20 so 21 and I was on B2 LTE um, still um, you know fairly good metrics for that one and I retested it and I got 207 for download and 28 for upload uh, again though my pings really stayed the same so this is what I would say is my best performance I can get in this house inside air conditioned space um, with the stock unit but of course, what a lot of you want to know is what about external antennas? So these are two waveform panel antennas. This one's a two by two here, the smaller one, and this is a four by four panel antenna. I've done lots of testing with these on the other gateways. They certainly improve the performance. So let's talk about a little bit of the downsides actually to this guy with the external antennas. And that's that when you go in here to the settings, you can switch between internal antenna or external antenna, which I think is a great setting to have. Um, and the downside of that though, is if you wanted to buy a two by two Mimo, which has its downsides, it's even on the other gateways, it's harder to know which pins you wanna pick to really get your best performance. So I really say, if you're gonna go through the hassle of uh, buying the antenna, installing it, especially if you're gonna take apart a gateway, then you might as well get the 4x4 because then you just know you hook them all up um, in the order of which, um, you know, myself or Waveform or, you know, wh whoever you buy it from uh, tells you how to hook it up. Uh, and the polarity does matter. So the order that you hook them up does matter. And so with this one, the downside I'm talking about is it's going to turn off the internal antennas and it's going to turn on these four ports. Well, if you buy a 2x2, two two, you only have two ports to fill in. So what are you going to do with the other ports? Um, so, I mean, you could maybe try to get a um, little screw in, uh, you know, the cheap ones that you can get on some of the other gateways that have a, um, uh, you know, looks like a Wi-Fi router where it has the, those antennas. You can maybe get those for 20 bucks or something and screw those in to try to help. But really, I would say, you know, I'll do some testing on it, but I'm going to assume that really you're going to want a 4x4 hooked up to this so you have all four antenna ports active on it and then you'll be able to get um, the most performance out of it. So I'm gonna do that testing in a different video because I'm sure it's gonna take me a little while. I wanna give you all the data as far as um, which order to hook them up at. 
Waveform does have a guide out there actually based off their research that they've done and they're going to do their own testing as well once they get the gateway but they do have a recommendation I'll follow that and then I'll also test out um, different orders just to make sure that that gives me the best performance uh, at my house. All right, so you know, in the end, what do I think of this? Well, it's certainly better that it has external antenna ports. That is the key differentiator versus the other gateways. The software limitations, um, no kind of bridge mode, port forwarding, um, any of that kind of stuff is available on their CG net network with um, out some specific tips or tricks that you have to do that um, a lot of users are not going to try to do. Now, if you get their 5G business plan, you can get a static IP, but otherwise on their home internet version, you can't. They don't give you the native option to turn off Wi-Fi or do any of those kind of things uh, with their gateways. They're very limited. They don't allow you to do band locking or any of that kind of stuff um, with their gateways. So very limited with capabilities from a software standpoint and that can really hinder you when you are trying to use this device and you have like I did on that first floor I could not use the device with the limited upload speeds that it has the download speed was more than sufficient for me to get my stuff done but the uploader would really stop me from doing that and what's sad is that if I were to take a third-party gateway like this one, this is actually a Ninja V2 from Chester Tech Repairs. This one and a lot of their other gateways, you can go in there and just tell it to not go on certain bands. And if I were to force it onto N71 there, I would get way faster uh, upload speed. Now my download speed in that actual spot actually stays the same or even gets better sometimes. Um, but in other spots, you know, you might get worse download speeds with N71 than you would with N41. But I would gladly trade that off for the upload speed. So this doesn't provide you the ability to, to fix that problem other than going to an external antenna, which is a good option for a lot of folks. You can easily install them, just screw them in to the back here. So um, if you're looking for a free gateway that you get from T-Mobile and that is allows you to put an external antenna on it by screwing it in, this is certainly the gateway to go to. If you don't intend to do that, I don't know why you'd want this gateway over the Sagemcom gateway or even the Arcadian KV21 or the Nokia one out there. To me, they're all fairly equal. Um, the KVD21 has kind of been slower. The Sagemcom um, has been faster than, um, than them in the past, uh, but not by a huge amount. It kind of varies more so by your specific location. So, um, if that's your need, this is it. If not, I would say it doesn't matter which one you get. And if you wanted to really mess with settings, go with a third-party one. I have lots of videos on them. It can be a really high-end one like Peplink that uh, are sold out there. And I have videos on and as well as discounts for them. Or it could be something that is um, like Chester Tech Repairs. And he does a lot of uh, support for this community uh, trying to figure out tips and tricks to do that so I cover some of that stuff as well but what you'll see with these gateways is um, your experience will vary greatly versus mine some folks will watch my videos and say ha you got 200 as your best I never go below 400 and there'll be other people that say man if I could only get 20 megabits per second I would be happy um, so it's really going to depend on your exact place and you'll have to mess with it yourself but hopefully my videos help guide you with how to get there and then if you have any questions about this gateway, please do let me know. You know, we didn't really touch much on the settings that are out there. And it's because there aren't any, just like all the other gateways. Um, and then right now, I'm also going to mess with, um, you know, I've done some scripting in the past to go in there and kind of hack and turn off Wi-Fi and that kind of stuff. There's also an app out there. I'm assuming the developer is probably going to add the capability of modifying um, this one as well. We'll test that out. So stay tuned. There's going to be lots more videos uh, coming out with this. And if you have any specific questions for me about this, please put them in the comments below. I'll try to either touch on them in future videos or answer them in the comments directly. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.